What's up you guys, I'm Dan, this is Frugal Not Cheap, and today we'll take a look at what the summer 2024 Tesla software update has brought to legacy vehicles. So I'm actually filming this on the last day of August, so it's still technically summer, but it a little, is it a little bit late in the summer. At the same time, Tesla normally launches um, their big uh, software update that has a lot of new features around the winter holidays, so more like around Christmas. So it's uh, interesting that they have now, you know, this kind of larger summer update coming out. Uh, so that is kind of fun. Um, but the features uh, did come out a lot slower for my vehicle. One, because it's what's called a legacy Model S. In other words, it was built um, before 2021. And then second, because I have full self-driving, and it takes a while for them to roll out the features um, to those of us that have full self-driving, especially if, you know, the updates are coming very quickly, um, and they've been coming out pretty slowly. I've been on full self-driving 12.3.6 now for uh, over three months, I think. So anyway, let's take a look at what most cars are supposed to get, because actually a lot of the features don't unfortunately trickle down to legacy vehicles like mine. And specifically the hardware that I have, by the way, is an Intel Atom processor with uh, the Media Control Unit 2. So I did upgrade from the MCU one. Um, and then again, I do have full self-driving as well. Okay, so here's just a website with what we're supposed to get with uh, this uh, 2024 summer update. So there's a new update for the Battle of Polytopia, which I did download, but for some reason it's still bugging me about a game update. And every time I connect to Wi-Fi, I don't know, I gotta figure that one out. I think it just wants to sit on Wi-Fi for a while uh, to complete that update. So I'm gonna do that later if I can. We have Go on Green for people that have uh, Autopilot. I'm not sure which version of Autopilot you need for that. Do let us know in the comments below. I've got full self-driving, so I've always had um, kind of Go on Green. I've never had to think about that. Um, supposedly we're now using uh, Vision for speed limits, so Hopefully that's good. I haven't noticed any improvements just yet, but hopefully that's happening. Um, and there's new parental controls, so that's good if you've got kids. Then we have, this is a new one, uh, which is navigation to sub-destinations. So if you're, for instance, going to the airport, now you can select which terminal you want to go to, and it'll be able to get you over there, so that's a nice thing. And then also we're supposed to have uh, weather forecasts and air quality monitoring. A new control panel for the climate, for those of you that have, again, newer vehicles. Um, other smaller improvements as well. Um, but really the big one, and I don't know why it's not showing up in there, is we also got some new um, media options as well. And that's going to be a lot of the focus of this video because those I did get. So let's take a look at the release notes from my vehicle. Oop, <laughs> misclick there, but it goes to show you that the climate panel is um, just the same as it always was, pretty much. Um, I, don't, I don't think there's any difference there, unfortunately. So here we are taking a look at the release notes. And so, you know, this is 24.26.7 that I have. 24.26.3.1 is the one that came with really all of the summer stuff. I mean, yeah, and 24.20, some security improvements and beach buggy racing, um, supercharger races. So that's kind of fun. Um, because now you can have kind of a leaderboard at each supercharger, so there's a competition there. Uh, but anyway, more security improvements. Um, but what we got, again, um, you know, minor things. We have a new schedule charge and preconditioning window that I'll show you. Um, that navigate to sub destinations did make it to my vehicle, which is nice. And then we also got Amazon Music and YouTube Music also. So let's, for instance, try to navigate to uh, DFW Airport. So here's Dallas Fort Worth International, and let's see if it allows us to do a sub. No, that did not work. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, hang on. Here we go. So now if I if I type in Dallas, just Dallas, uh, then yeah, look, I can do arrivals, departures, and all this stuff for um, that. And then oh, that's interesting. Even different buildings at them. Um, at this college. So that's kind of cool. And yeah, if we go all the way to typing in Dallas Fort Worth Airport, now we can choose our terminal. So there it is. That's the new sub destinations thing. Um, a little bit slow. Um, I think it's probably easier just to, to use a voice command. So let's take a look and see if that works.
Take me to Dallas-Fort Worth International Terminal B. And there you go. So that's a, that's a lot faster anyway um, than having to type in all that stuff. So. Okay, cool. So that's the sub destinations. Here is the um, the scheduling, and so this is basically just a yeah a schedule based on location, uh, home, work, or your current location to precondition the battery or charge. So it's nice that we have now you know a dedicated menu to set that up. Um, if you have some routines that you want to follow, have the car follow automatically. Um, I don't have that. I just plug in the car when I get home, and I never think about it. So <laughs> that's that. All right, so let's take a look at the music sources. And um, so generally, I do play music off of USB. Uh, this isn't good that I'm getting these loading errors um, sometimes. I don't, I don't really know what the deal there is. So yeah, let me know if you know anything about that. But of course, um, you know, it plays just fine if we go into a song there. All right, so uh, jumping into the different audio sources. Now we have now quite a lot of different audio sources that are available. In terms of sound quality though, you know, I'll give you my ranking at the end, but here let's add the two new ones. So we'll add Amazon Music and also YouTube Music. And I do actually have, um, I did uh, get a trial of YouTube Premium so that I would have YouTube Music for this video. And then I also um, have a little trial of uh, Amazon Prime as well. And that's that's active so that um, I can check out the uh, check out the audio. Um, I do. There are copyright issues, so I can play a, a few seconds of each song. But what I'll actually do is sit down and, and listen to the song uh, myself, and then um, I'll be able to give you my my view on uh, audio quality uh, when we finish. Oh, this climate icon does look new, so that's kind of nice. It looks good, but it also looks a bit out of place compared to um, these icons that haven't been updated. So yeah, not sure uh, how I feel about that one. But why don't we jump into Amazon Music? Because um, that's one I've actually never, uh, never really used. And uh, so let me log into the account and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so logging into Amazon using that QR code was really easy. And I was able to set up a passkey so that I can just use either facial recognition or my fingerprint in order to log in next time. Uh, so that was nice. Let's go in and take a look at the UI and then listen to some music. Okay, so here's the UI. Um, it does have my personal library over here. Um, let's see if we can hit songs and see what's out there. Yeah, so here we go. Here are all my all my songs. Um, and then, of course, you can do podcasts and you can do home. And then what I think I, I'll do is listen to uh, one of my favorite songs by... Oh, this is a station. Okay, this is a decent song, but not the one that I want to listen to. Um, let's see how the search works here. So I want to listen to actually the song Lean On by Major Lazer. So there's the song and let's see if we're able to play that song. Uh, no, it's, a, it's just going to do the mix. Oh, that's really annoying. Um, all right, so screw that. That's annoying. I think you need to get Amazon Unlimited in order to play the, the song that you want right off the bat. However, um, if I could figure out how to go back, uh, there's no, there's no back button. Okay, this is, uh, that's not a good thing in the UI. <laughs> uh, geez, really? All right, so what am I going to do? I'm going to close it, I guess, and then come back. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's how you go back. That is not, um, <laughs> that's not a good way to do it. Uh, let me see if we can find that song here in my library instead. Oh gosh, um, it's going to be an alphabetical and each page only has so many songs. Oh, this is really not good. <laughs> uh, oh boy, really? Are you kidding me? Oh man. <laughs> uh, all right, and then let's see if I even have that song. Because um, I haven't had this for a long time. Oh gosh, no, I don't even, I don't even have that song on here, guys, so I'm gonna have to play something else. <laughs> Alright, well, let's play Notorious Thugs, right? Why not? Let's see how this sounds. What? Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> so, unless you have Amazon Unlimited, even playing from your own library, uh, you can't play the song that you want. So, I'm just going to have to um, play something. 
and then I'll listen to it and see if it's any good and then like Jesus let you know okay well I did find the back button so here's the navigation button so here's here's how you go back and we can go back home all right so I can say the separation's really good um, but uh, I'm not sure. The quality, I think, the bit rate's relatively low. Um, it's probably a little bit tinny, but I'm going to listen to it off of Bluetooth and see if that sounds any better. Alright, so playing with the Amazon Music app off of my phone um, with the settings for highest quality audio when streaming, um, the sound is definitely much, much crisper and fuller. So, yeah, the bit rate's quite low uh, when playing with the Amazon app uh, using the Tesla UI. Which is a shame because, of course, you don't want to be messing with your phone when you're driving. Uh, you want to be using the nice big screen. So that's a bummer. Let's take a look at YouTube Music next. Here we go with YouTube Music. I'll have to sign in again. It should be easy with the QR code. Okay, I got YouTube Music connected using the QR code. Um, but because I had to type in a code, it was actually much less convenient than with Amazon Music where, you know, Chrome remembered my password and so all I had to do was click sign in. All right, here is the uh, YouTube Music UI. So again, same thing. Here's the back and forward button. So good to know uh, where that is. And of course, I've got my library. And then, um, you know, we've got all this stuff. Um, I hear that there's an issue kind of with the playlist. So that's kind of annoying. Um, but let's take a look at some of this uh, liked music and listen to the audio quality. So this is one song that I know what it sounds like on USB. All right, so this actually sounds pretty good. I think it sounds better than Amazon Music did. So it could be that the form of compression that they're using or whatever the, the codec is might be um, a little bit better. I'm not sure. Someone had talked about like some settings that you could do, but I don't see any settings in here. So anyway, I'm going to listen to this on Bluetooth using the YouTube Music app and see if it's any better. But one improvement we've already seen, though, is at least from my library, I was able to choose the song that I wanted to listen to. And um, actually, let's go ahead and jump in and see if we can pick a song um, that's not in my library as well. All right, so let's take a look at just um, uh, let's let's search for something because that's always always the best way to do it, I think. So, yeah, let's play. Um, let's play solo dance. Yeah, okay, good. And so the results did pop up here with the YouTube music one says the top. So let's see if I can play this song by Martin Jensen. In the faded light, oh, yeah. Well, it sounds pretty good, actually. So let's take a look. Um, I'm going to have a listen over Bluetooth now. Interesting. So in this case, I think actually um, Bluetooth doesn't sound any really much better than um, than it does playing over the UI. So yeah, they're, they seem to be doing something right in terms of the audio quality there. Um, the highs do sound a little bit shrill. So what I'm going to do is listen to these songs now off of USB and see um, you know how the highs compare. Huh. All right, so I think my conclusion here is that, and this is kind of surprising, so USB still sounds crisper. So I think that, you know, definitely you can tell there's a difference in the bit rate there. However, the processing is better on YouTube Music. And this is something that I find also sometimes, on, even on just on Bluetooth, is that um, the sound stage is kind of uh, whatever Tesla is doing software-wise is um, better off of Bluetooth and also off of these streaming apps. Um, and thankfully here in the case of YouTube Music, I think that the sound quality is actually quite solid, uh, which is not what I was expecting. I looked on Reddit and people were saying that actually the quality is not very good. Um, I don't think that's the, the case at all here. So of course over time, you know, I may be able to form a, a more of an opinion, you know, as I listen to this music source for a week and two weeks and that kind of thing. But my initial impression is really quite solid. And there are a couple of other things too that are better here about YouTube music over playing for over USB. One we already saw was that when I got into the car, it said that there was loading error. 
This is because the USB goes to sleep. Uh, whenever the car goes to sleep, it doesn't provide power to the USB drive. And so music doesn't uh, playback, doesn't restart when you get in the car right off the bat. Uh, the other one that's always been <laughs> an issue here off of USB is that, um, doo -doo 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 -doo, um, is that here on the instrument cluster, when we select the, uh, the media, then the album art, as you can see here, um, when we change to a different track, <laughs> it uh, does not change appropriately as it should. So that's not good. But if we over to go to, uh, to YouTube music here, so we'll hunt uh, the YouTube music and uh, we'll play Why Can't You Wait? And uh, we'll see the album art change in both places. And then also switching over here to this song as well. So the album art changes. And as you can see, the quality of the album art um, is quite good as well here uh, using uh, YouTube Music. So that's good. Uh, the color temperature is off. Sorry about that. That's just uh, the lighting that we have today. Maybe I'll try something a little darker here. And oh, no, that's not good <laughs> either. Um, anyway, uh, just... I guess I'm just saying that the album art does look really good there, um, even though it doesn't look um, quite as good uh, here on the video, unfortunately. So I don't know why that is. Uh, and then another handy thing here is, again, if we do search for something, so like here I'm in the USB right now, and uh, if I want to search for a song, uh, like, well, I don't know, let's, let's say I want to hear Voices by Disturbed, right? So I search for Voices. And um, you can see here that we already have um, a lot of results here for YouTube Music. Um, we also have results here for Amazon Music, which I've selected as a source. Uh, and then we have Tesla's kind of, um, um, I don't remember what, what the built-in is, as well as karaoke. But there are no search results for USB. So if I quickly want to find a song to listen to off of my USB drive, um, it would take forever to find. So that's not good. And that is another reason why YouTube Music is better. So to summarize my thoughts here, um, first let's just talk about the summer update in general. Uh, we didn't get a whole lot of new stuff here for Legacy Model S and X cars. All we got was the sub destinations and the navigation. I didn't say anything about the air quality and the weather and stuff. Uh, I don't know why they didn't implement that. That would be something easy. We did get the scheduled charging and preconditioning. Um, so that's nice. You know, that's a nice little addition in the menu, although it is getting a little bit busy there uh, because it is a landscape screen. Uh, we're able to fit all of those different menus in there quite well. Regarding the music, of course, happy to get any new audio sources. Uh, Amazon Music sounds eh, you know, kind of tinny using the Tesla UI. Sounds better over Bluetooth when we set it to allow for the, um, the high quality audio streaming. Sounds quite good. Moving over to YouTube music, though, this is the pleasant surprise. So um, it sounds not all that much better over Bluetooth than it does um, over the um, the Tesla version. In fact, um, the Tesla version might sound even a little bit better to, to my ear on this initial read. Uh, but the really big surprise to me is while I can tell that there's a reduction in the bit rate uh, compared to USB, that I think right now, just in terms of the improvement in the sound stage, um, that that... Uh, reduction in quality isn't quite so overwhelming and that we um, now have the benefits of having the the um the, the album art both in the instrument cluster properly being able to search for music properly um, and the fact that uh, amazon music i'm sorry youtube uh, music allows you to select the song that you want to listen to right off the bat unlike with amazon music where you need to pay for an additional upgrade beyond prime in order to get that feature with amazon music unlimited um, actually i think at least uh, for for the next little while maybe for a month or more i am going to try out using youtube music as my uh, my daily uh, music source and um, I'll update you you know whenever the next video is on how I'm doing with that um, but I think I'm going to try it and I'm really quite pleased with it as a music um, as a music source here I should point out, by the way, that I don't have the premium audio. I have a you know 2017 Model S uh, with the bass audio, so the experience could differ if you've got the premium audio that also has that um, sort of Tesla's version of the Dolby surround sound kind of deal. So I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on that as well in the comments. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.